Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can import your ActorCore character and motions into Maya. ActorCore 2.0 now offers optimized character downloads on top of the massive motion library already available. From the main page you'll find a number of categories which allow you to quickly filter down to the character you want. In this video, we're going to use this stylishly dressed character. Please be aware that all of the characters contain morph data for talking, blinking, and making facial expressions. I'm also going to switch to the Motion tab to search for a talking animation by searching for talking. I can then filter down to male character motions and select the motions that I want. You'll be able to find them in your inventory, which you can access from your account icon. In order to download, simply press the download button. From there, you'll be prompted to choose the target avatar for your character. If you're downloading the motion for a custom character, then please select either the male or female dummy models for a retarget reference. In this case, we already know the male character model that we're going to use, so we can simply select him. Since we're going to download both model and motion, we can ensure that the export motion only checkbox is unchecked. Up next, you'll need to choose your export settings. You can choose to add the facial blend shapes, and when exporting to Maya, be sure to check the Embed Texture option. Naturally, we'll also choose Maya as the target tool preset. For more details on the export settings, please check out the Getting Started video in this series. Let's take a look at how to apply the textures to your character model in Maya now. Once you download the FBX, you can take a look at the folder structure to see where all the texture maps are. You'll notice that all character meshes will be merged into PBR textures for optimal performance. Let's go ahead now then and import the FBX from the file menu. Make sure to choose the Add option in the Import Settings. You'll notice that the character actually has quite a simple mesh. To see the materials, let's open Hypershade and then select the character material. We can then proceed to edit the bump and normal mapping. Once we change the color space to raw, the character's appearance will improve. However, Maya only uses a basic Lambert model, so if we want to apply all of the PBR textures that we exported, then we still need to manually apply them. First, let's add the AI standard surface material, which will allow us to remap the textures. Next, let's make sure the character is selected, and then assign this material to selection to our target character. In the base section, I'm going to apply our diffuse map to the color field so we have the basic diffuse set up. Next, I'm going to go into the geometry section and apply the normal map to the bump mapping field. We need to ensure that we change the use as combo box option to tangent spaced normals here, and also change color space to raw. The roughness map is next, and that goes into the color field in the specular section. Here, we also need to change the color space to raw. The metallic map can be found in the base section, and we're going to place it in the metalness field. Once again, color space needs to be set to raw. With the metallic settings, we need to go to the graph network, and in the node for the metallic map, connect the out color R to metalness. Finally, we need to apply our ambient occlusion map, so let's first make a bit of room in our material graph. From there, we can simply click and drag the map in and press the Tab key to add an AI Multiply node, which will allow us to combine the AO and Diffuse maps. Make sure to connect their respective color outputs to the base color of your material. If we want to see the difference between having an AO map or not, we can go up to Arnold and add a Sky Dome light. Normally, the viewport will look different than when rendered with Arnold. We can go ahead and render to see the difference. In this case, we're not going to use the AO texture because we're only going to demonstrate the motion in our viewport. So I'll pipe the diffuse output directly into our base color and leave the AO texture out of it. Let's move on to applying the motion and editing the blend shapes next. I'm going to go import the FBX from the file menu first. Here, it's important to select Update Animation. Once it's imported, we can play back the animation to see the results. If we want to add facial animation, then we need to open up the Blend Shape Editor to modify the morph values. 
Here you can see that there are a bunch of morphs that are used for everything from facial expressions to lip syncing. If we want to animate the face using the blend shapes, then we need to click on Key in the Shape Editor panel and turn on Auto Keyframe Toggle at the bottom right corner. After that, we can adjust the blend shape parameters to whatever we want. In this case, I'm just selecting the Eye Blink blend shape and having our character blink at various intervals over the first section of the animation. Once we have everything set, then you can see the blinking animation. You can do all of the same stuff with the other blend shapes as well to create a complete animation that includes both body motion and facial expressions. ActorCore's optimized functional characters can be used in all sorts of pipelines from architectural pre-visualization to film and game design. They are visually realistic, yet light on resources, meaning they won't weigh down your project. Thanks for watching everyone, be sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.